people have asked um, how easy or difficult is it to set up a Windows network, a Windows environment inside AWS. Um, so I thought i uh, probably put a quick video out on that. So effectively, there's two places that you're going to manage this. So you have to create first your virtual private cloud. Now, Amazon's quite disciplined at the way um, that, it, um, that it manages its instances and the networking uh, within that. But the, what they mean by virtual private cloud is effectively they've got all of this wonderful um, cloud infrastructure and architecture um, but you want to be able to carve that own little piece up um, yourself um, so uh, it, it, uh, for the reason that you don't want it to talk to anything publicly obviously with with public IP addresses and elastic IP addresses um, you can connect whatever you want to whatever you want um, but uh, but you need to have a, a virtual private uh, uh, network configured, um, a virtual private cloud configured um, before you can do anything because you actually launch your Windows instances into in, into this virtual private cloud. Once you once you've created an instance in one VPC, um, if you need to move it to another VPC, you have to effectively image, shut it down, and then re phoenix. Uh, the image of it was completely brand new effectively so um, so it is important for you to understand the importance so there's two places within AWS that this is actually done so you've got so uh, people get confused they try to launch the VPC within the EC2 environment but it's actually not it's a completely separate environment obviously the reason why VPC is important obviously at Amazon predominantly from uh, an infrastructure perspective, uh, perspective it's the EC2 environment but you think all of these other services um, application services uh, email services just about storage just about everything is connected in your in your VPC uh, within Amazon so it doesn't just uh, apply to infrastructure in, in, uh, instances so okay so just very quickly just create a, a VPC uh, so I haven't done this for a while for a new setup. So apologies if I uh, need to sort of double check a few steps. So again, start VPC. Obviously, it gives you your options. Uh, obviously, feel free to read through though, but, uh, those. But effectively, when we want um, a single public sub subnet, and by that we mean one external IP address is in your standard business environment. One external IP address, you can add them later. Um, but then uh, an internal subnet, effectively. So we'll select that. So we'll take the defaults. But I suppose what we have to appreciate is that setting this environment up is like setting up any business network. If we had a Cisco or a firewall uh, uh, watch guard firewall device um, obviously we could choose whatever um, internal and external uh, IP ranges that we wanted um, but here we'll just take the default VPC name test network uh, we'll keep it all lowercase test network one okay good so uh, availability zone um, so stuff about availability zones in other videos but we'll just say no preference actually we will do let's use EU1 uh, EU West 1A uh, the only reason this is relevant is that when we actually create our Windows 2012 subnets at a later date um, okay good so I think we're keeping all the defaults here and when I actually go and click create VPC there is your virtual private cloud all set up so we'll just click on VPC uh, test network one so it's even named it for us and if you click on it here it gives you more information DNS resolution yes DNS host name yes um, so I've I've not actually created a, a, a diagram uh, in other videos I, I do have a PowerPoint that supports that but uh, uh, um, um, the, the videos rather but effectively what we need to appreciate is that what we've just done there is set up our own network environment um, we haven't done a security group yet but what we've basically done is just set up an off this network um, uh, as opposed for it being on site it's just it's your own little uh, place in the cloud carved out so with any office network uh, we have routing tables which just really um, um, give you access to be able to route between um, different subnets. If we need to limit traffic, then obviously we need to do that. But in your standard sort of under 254 sort of servers or PCs, we don't need to. Uh, internet gateway, so it gives you a default gateway. It obviously 
creates your own, the ability for you to have a, a, a DHCP um, process. Uh, all of the VMs within Amazon that you launch get their IP addresses automatically. Um, this is the only way you can't actually manually select them as far as I'm aware. Uh, elastic IPs, this gives us the ability to have external IP addresses connecting in. We'll come back to that. Um, uh, access control lists, security groups, and what you're seeing here. So if I create a security group, all I'm, I'll come actually create a security group another time, but all we're basically saying in a, in a security group, it's a firewall wall, so rule. So effectively your security groups and applying them uh, to VPCs or to instances themselves, um, all that is effectively uh, is what it is like what, how you would configure your standard firewall. So a VPC is effectively your glorified uh, sort of firewall router management. Um, so we'll just go back to that VPC. Um, and I think we're pretty much done. We'll just check. So it creates a, a security group for you, a default security group. Um, and we will actually select that default security group, which allows all of the traffic. Um, we won't actually do that here. We'll do that on the instances for them to communicate. But just by going through that wizard, that's effectively your VPC setup. So the next bit, um, let's go to the EC2 instance. So let's build a couple of Windows servers, um, instances. So we're going to launch an instance. Uh, let's just do the standard base 64 bit. Uh, we'll do it on an SSD because it will be quicker. Obviously, there's other videos in terms of just what instance type you require and for what use. Uh, so we'll configure the instance detail. So here, here's the piece. So if we wasn't able, I've got a couple of sort of test groups here anyway, but so the one that we created was test network one. If I select a different VPC, and once I've built that workstation, I can't remove that easily without re-imaging. It's not easily selectable. That's not because Amazon haven't done their job properly. It's just relevant to understand um, because uh, because of the, 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 how the security needs to work to make sure uh, that all of the traffic is segregated. Um, so auto assign a, a public IP address. We will do that just to make it easier here. You probably wouldn't need to if we was doing in this a production in a production state. Okay, so just have a look there. Okay, that's wonderful. So we launched that. So I will use an existing key pair just because so I don't have to create lots of key pairs. Actually, well, now let's just show you how uh, create new pair. Test group um, one. So we'll download the key pair. To put us into a PM file. Okay, so let's launch the instance. So then that's going to build away within our Amazon console. We can see that's pending here. I will just name this test server one effectively. Uh, that will do. Sorry, test server one. I actually make that mistake every time I try to give a label a server, but never mind. Um, okay, so let's actually go through and launch another instance while that's working. So again, we want the Windows 2012. Obviously, I could have selected sort of any operating system there. Let's make it on a half decent disk. So this is nice and quick. Uh, I went straight to review and launch there. So that was the uh, deliberate mistake. Uh, configure instance details. So what we obviously want to do is put us on the test one network. Auto assign public IP and I'll come back to that. Uh, review and launch. And launch again so it's asked me about the uh, test group that I need uh, the security um, uh, the key pair that I need and I'm acknowledging that I have that downloaded yes and that's building away so as you can see the first test server one run um, uh, and that's how quickly they take effect so I'm going to pause because it takes four minutes to build the full PC but I'll come back in a sec Okay, so um, so that should be done now. Uh, so I'll show you how we can connect. So when we go to server one, connect you download the remote desktop file. So what I always do. Let's actually rename this uh, test server one, 
and then we want to get the password so what this is additional security what they're basically saying is unless you've got access to that PEM file uh, so it's two two phase authentication I mean again we can create DMZs in AWS you can keep doing security as a service that you know uh, this is just the basic level of security and even then it's it, it's dual th uh, dual factor authentication so we'll just just click somewhere here uh, test server build pm uh, just for organization apologies i keep a lot of my stuff in tidy good okay and to server build pm uh, i actually need to get it first Copy that. Let's put that in to paste. Right, so there we go. So apologies. Now we're back on track. So okay, uh, so it will show you all the uh, the encryption details there. You can actually just paste it in. If you ask to decrypt the password, it will give you the password. The whole reason I created my tidy folder because I knew there was going to be a few files here. Uh, to serve a bill PM, uh, let's actually create a little text document, which is a bit naughty. We use a secure PPM system for this, but uh, given the fact that it's test, I mean, then I will just put in there very quickly. Password server one. So let's go ahead and launch that server quickly just so that we can get that running. So if we uh, go back to where the RDP file is uh, in my downloads, and what I will do, um, uh, let's just edit that first so we can make it smaller on the screen. Let's take that down to 800 by 600. Go back and save. So let's launch that. And then that wants the admin password. Uh, this was one I prepared earlier. So let's just go over to the tidy folder server build. Let's get the admin password there. So again, once we start stepping up security, we can use certification server uh, services, but that's not required at this stage. So there we have. Let's let test server one do what it's doing. And let's go back to test server two, connect. So again, we're gonna do the same process. So I won't talk through so much here. So, so I'll do both the edits at the same time. Uh, so display, take that down to 800 by 600. Uh, and then we'll save that. Just close that quickly. We'll rename that test server two. Cancel that down and let's get the password. So again, it already knew um, the location to my test group one PM file because we did it before. Uh, so luckily we don't have to do that again. Look at the password. It's uh, effectively um brute force attack good but we can obviously change these at a later date uh server two okay good so i'll keep this anyway close and then let's actually go excuse me let's actually go and launch that i don't know why that's not behaving but let's just connect here so it should be 800 by 600 now what's the password 
We'll put that in there. So, and there's test server two. So we've got test server one, test server two. While test server one's doing its thing, I will, uh, whoops, the run command. Fired from my own internal window. Wait for the keyboard to catch up. So let's just show you around the, so you can see here, as per my VPC, so we've got standard um, IP subnet here, um, standard IP addressing, and again, so it creates your default gateway, it creates your DNS. Let's actually just show you that all there. So you can see, gives you all your suffix searches, uh, it gives you your default gateway, it gives you DHCP uh, address, uh, it gives you a DNS server. Uh, more about that when we actually create the NSF uh, for the Windows environment in AWS in a later video. Um, but all default stuff. So if I go to then ping my 10.0.0.1, I can ping that. That's great. So let's just go over here to the other server. Um, and then let's just do the same process here. Config, we'll go straight to all. Again, same default gateway, different IP address though. So let's now ping uh, 10.0.0.1, uh, not one. What was the IP address of this machine? Uh, do, 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 uh, where are I? 134. So as you can see, it's, it's very strange. I mean, this is not like your default office environment. Uh, we should be able, uh, okay, there we go, it's actually, so it's got a reply from 139, which was which is local, but it couldn't get to 134, uh, which is this box here. So effectively, the way that we achieve this uh, is to go back to our EC2 console, and we will select the security groups uh, for the instance. Uh, currently instance networking change security groups so we need to make sure that we've got the default VPC security groups that was created at the time of the VPC and let's just go here networking change security groups uh, default VPC as well so now when I go to ping the other server Uh, it doesn't do as it should. So let's just double check that. Uh, config. So then ping dot uh, one. So the other thing I did before. systems and security. I know that we'll just create a separate rule in a proper Windows environment so we wouldn't just switch the firewalls off. Um, but let's just switch them off anyway. Um, obviously we would create individual rules. So let's just do that over here as well. System security, Windows firewall. Turn off, turn off, okay. So, fingers crossed, that's what's stopping the ping. Uh, obviously not, let me troubleshoot that and I'll come straight back. Okay, so uh, probably like to say, uh, would you uh, spot the deliberate mistake on that one? So, um, that for me, um, or for the purpose of this video, should I say, uh, was actually quite a, a fortunate issue to have. So effectively, so we've got it working now. Uh, we can ping over, you'll notice it's got a new IP address uh, and we can ping back as well. Uh, config, uh, so one, uh, 
ping uh, send dot zero dot zero dot one three nine. Now the reason for this is that if we go into the VPC manager, now your actual subnet, as we can see the test subnet here, um, its availability zone is EU West one A. Now, uh, what happened uh, on the actual instance that I accident when I actually brought it up, this was the test server one was an EU West 1C. Now, availability zones are obviously sort of failover zones. There's uh, other videos uh, that exist to explain those in more details. And you can actually route. So I could have actually configured the networking to route between the availability zones, which we would need, obviously, in a disaster recovery um, scenario where we're doing block IO um, uh, style replication. Uh, but for this, uh, for the purpose of this video, all I did was just change uh, the availability zone over. So now they can uh, talk to each other. So that's it. So it is fairly, uh, it, it can be a bit fiddly first couple of times that you do it. Um, but at the end of the day, if you get stuck with any issues, uh, if you're a funded sort of Amazon account, uh, you've got an Amazon partner, then Amazon are pretty good at answering these questions if you ever get stuck. So I think that's, uh, that's pretty much it.